Greetings, everybody. My name is Rob Banke, co-founder at Halborn. I wanted to welcome you to another edition of Critical Spotlight. For today's episode, we have Alexis Fabry. Um, Alexis, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about what you found. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexis Fabre. I'm a senior security offensive engineer at Halborn uh, for uh, almost three years now. And I'm focusing on the security of complex projects uh, such as Rust project or cross-chain projects as well. The main vulnerability that I want to talk about today is about a bridge that uh, we recently audited. Uh, and just to get a little bit of context, the way that bridges function uh, usually is that you, you lock the asset that you want to transfer on one chain and you want the asset to be minted on the counterparty chain. And how does that happen is that uh, the locking site in the smart contract will emit an event that is pulled by an external actor. It could be a program running on the server that is pulling the events on one chain. And when trying to see that there is a locking event, a deposit event on the bridge, it will pick up the event and relay it on the counterparty chain and, and mint the tokens to the user, to the destinatory. Uh, now, what happens if that relayer, this off-chain service, uh, is in a failed state is that you cannot get your minted tokens on one chain and you cannot get back your uh, collateral on the other chain, on the source chain. So basically, you want to add a refund mechanism. And that's where you add the complexity. And if you don't handle all the execution branches, you can lead to several vulnerabilities. And for example, this special vulnerability where uh, the user uh, claims the token on the counterparty chain at the same time as getting the refund. And since there is a asynchronous way of working in the off-chain service because it needs to pick up the event on one chain and relay it, it can take one minute difference. So during that one minute window, anyone could claim the tokens on one chain and get a refund. And that would essentially allow him to have both the mint token and the collateral. Yeah, so that was the vulnerability. That's really bad. That makes sense. Perfect sense why that finding was definitely deemed to be a critical. Um, you know, we have we work with companies all the time that are building bridges and building exciting things in the world of DeFi. Uh, how did you find this? How did you uncover this? Mainly when we receive a project, we want to do a, a deep review of the code just to understand how uh, deeply the function programs uh, the, the program is functioning uh, and then try to get a architecture review out of this just try to see functionally what components are talking to each other uh, so in the context of a bridge you have the smart contract talking to the other smart contracts on the counterparty chain through a relayer so there is uh, just interfaces between all these three components and now you want to list all the possible states and all the possible actions and transitions of your program. For example, uh, a state would be uh, a deposit is on the way to be bridged or uh, the, the token have been minted already. And you have all these actions that your could do, which is uh, lock tokens, uh, claim the counterparty minted tokens or get refunds. So you just try to list everything and try to see if every case is was handled by the code. Well, I mean, makes sense. This is what we're doing every day is finding <laughs> major criticals. Uh, what did we recommend how to fix this? What, what was the remediation that was suggested? The essential remediation for that was to add a, a period of time, a buffer between the locking of the assets on the source chain and the refund mechanism. For example, you, you would have to wait one day to, to be able to claim the refund. So it was just to make sure that there would be a, a back and forth information between the source chain uh, looking the event and the uh, counterparty chain where the user either claimed or not. And if he claimed, the relayer will also reach the event to the source chain to say the user claimed so he cannot get a refund. So essentially that buffer zone would just make sure that the relayer did his job properly. Okay, makes makes sense. Um, you know, we work with a lot of bridges, work with a lot of DeFi projects. 
what's your recommendation to how people can prevent, you know, writing bugs like this? So about writing bugs specifically like this, uh, it's, it's a matter of listing all the possible states on your contracts. And the more complex is the program, the more states you will gonna uh, end up having. So writing simple code is really crucial and, and, and security, an internal security review should just aim to list all the possible states that you have, all the possible transition, and try to see if your code handles all of this. And uh, for sure, having the code being reviewed and audited multiple times by different actors is also a huge security uh, bonus for just not, not having bugs like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Makes total sense. Um, really want to thank you for your time, Alexis, for walking us through and explaining this. Um, we're just about out of time now. So thanks again. And thank you all for watching another episode of Critical Spotlight. See you at the next one. See ya.